Today's topic, Derek Jackson. Some people feel like we're not fit enough to, you know, counter Derek Jackson. That we're not life. So I said, you know what, you're right. So what I did instead was I got Derek Jackson to argue against Derek Jackson. <laughs> like I was watching a YouTube clip, but two girls came to the show. I think they were sisters. They had boyfriends, and they were there to ask the host what they should do about their controlling boyfriends. The boyfriends wouldn't let them wear certain things. Wouldn't let them go certain places. If a dude is trying to control you. That's not cute. That's your cue to leave. That's your cue to run for the fucking hills before it gets worse. Control, that's the segue, that's the gateway drug to abuse. Ladies, I know sometimes when a dude tell you like you can't do this and you can't do that, y'all be thinking that he just being controlling, but that ain't always the case. If a dude fuck with you, it is some things that he's just not gonna tolerate. Oh, and another thing, if a dude really loves you, he ain't gonna let you come out the house or be on social media just any kind of way. Hardly wearing no clothes or being pissy drunk, like, he ain't gonna have none of that shit. How? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hold up. We gotta cover this. But a lot of you have also been tagging me in the post, in the story about Kim Bella and Joel Santana getting engaged. And then I didn't know what we were dealing with. Until Kim Bella jumped in the comment section to validate that, yes, she's been waiting. She even gave you ladies some advice. She said, ladies, if that's the man you want and love, you will wait however long if the love is real. I got to address this. If you wait for somebody to see in you what you've been seeing in them for 10 years, or wait for somebody to want with you what you've been wanting with them for 10 years, the love ain't real. Not the love for yourself. It doesn't take a man who's diligently working and trying to progress and trying to groom himself to be husband ready no damn 10 years or anything close to it. What's good, y'all? So the other day in Detroit after the event, a girl came up to me and asked what she should do about guys who don't want to wait to have sex because right now, that's what she on. It's bullshit when a dude said he just cannot wait because really he's saying one of two things. Either he doesn't want what you want or in his eyes, you're not worth the wait. And in either case, he's not worth the rush. But then... <laughs> but then, but then she, I'm not worthy to contest you, Derek. I don't have the knowledge. Hell, I don't have the following. And apparently, according to some of y'all followers, uh, we're jealous of that. But now, this is not us talking. This is Soldier Boy. You. So, so, so men have to wait if women want them to. But women don't have to wait if men want them to. Let's see, because the, 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 the way mathematics works that that don't that don't really make any sense well, the square root of this is doo-doo <laughs> <laughs> i have a question for you hey, go ahead what you dated your girl for how long 20 years now 20 well, years and when and, and when did the marriage happen <laughs> after 16 after after 16 years yeah. so you were ready to propose at that point when you you proposed yeah if she had said hey when are you gonna get this done it's been 10 years what would you have proposed? she never did she, she never did. She was patient. She was patient. Yeah, and that's probably the reason why I took my time with it and everything and stuff. Like I had other things to, I had other things to 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 to, 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 to work on myself. You know, what I mean, like we started dating when we was sixteen. Like it is a, I'm not the man that I was when I was sixteen. Shit, when I was sixteen, I was not a man. So there's a lot of growth, and I'm still not there, mind you. I'm still trying to improve every freaking day. But for that, yeah, I took my time with it. But according to Derek, this man's relationship should have never worked. By that point, it should have just fizzled out or whatever. But no, this is a conscious decision he made to his girl when he was ready for it. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I just, I, I think preach, because preach is like, you know, for me, like the opposite. He's been with his girl since he's 16. I've been single for a very long time now. So we have completely different perspectives. But I have a tremendous amount of respect for the fact that preach didn't rush anything. He didn't let society dictate how his relationship was going to go. He said, I'm going to take it at my own pace with somebody I know I love, and I'm going to do it when I'm ready. And I think that's beautiful. And, and, and that's the thing. There's people just don't go, go in, in, in logic. Um, like sometimes they were telling me, yeah, but by like it was ten years, and yeah, but by now you should be, you should have been proposing. So what? So 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 how long ago should I propose? I don't know. Like five years in, okay. So if I started going out with her at ten, that means I should have proposed to her when I was fifteen. No, you know, because for you it's just a time. Why? Right? It's a time frame. It's a time. Five years, five years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So ten, fifteen, yeah, yeah. But then, you, then you were too young to to propose. Oh, oh, and now I'm old enough. So it's really just the age. Twenty six. Ding. You're supposed to. That's not how life works. No. Go to your pace, do your thing, and do whatever. It's the same thing for success. Yeah. People are like, oh, you're 28, you haven't figured out your career. Some people only make it when they're 40. Some people, like Morgan Freeman, make it when they're 50. Samuel you know, Jackson. 
right? So people find their success in life at different stages, the same way people find the love of their life and their marriage partner at different places. There is no rush. I would just tell everyone, take your time. You have a lot of growing to do. There isn't, society's telling you there's a rush. As a woman, society's like, yo, your biological clock is ticking, this and that, yada, yada, yada. You may not be at that place yet where you're ready to be with that life partner, so don't rush it. The question is, D, how do I make a man miss me or you know, really just regret letting me walk away or dumping me? All right? And my answer is the same every single time. Just invest energy into yourself, stop focusing on that, let it go, walk away, blah, 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 right? But if you have to get something off your chest, like if you if you just have something on your chest, it's spiteful, it's petty, or whatever it is that you want to call it, and you have to get it off your chest, I would rather you take that route as opposed to seeking out revenge. And if you're going to take that route, there is a right way to do it. His advice seems sound at first. Hey, forget about it, move on, better yourself, blah, blah, blah. But if you petty, if you petty, I'm going to help you. Okay. I don't know what kind of if life coach you're petty and you know it, clap your hands. I'm petty, you're not petty. Okay. <laughs> what kind of life coach is like yeah be petty and resentful and channel your energy at getting back to people that you want to cut out of your life i don't know but maybe it's your life coach move on with your things but you know what we like revenge <laughs> let's see how you do the second part the second part is cutting him off because guess what a man wants to tell himself after the relationship is over yeah she's still stressed she's still in love with me if i wanted her back i could have her okay this is only true for bad people. I would never want to leave somebody I used to like or liked, right? Just because maybe our relationship's not working. If I'm leaving that person, I don't want them to linger on me. I don't want them to continue having feelings for me. I don't take pleasure in knowing that this person has a hard time sleeping at night or is heartbroken. That doesn't make me happy. Any man who's good and feels good, he's garbage. And the sooner you can get away from that garbage, the better. So I don't know why you would want to try to get back at garbage because listen, right? The longer that you start playing with shit, the longer you're going to smell. <laughs> like, like what? if you think somebody's trash, why would you play in the trash? Because maybe you like trash. So I, I, I'm just trying to say, like, that's, that's definitely not true. I, I've never, and I mean never, left a relationship thinking, yo, she's still into me. That's fucking dope. That's whack. I would say this doesn't really compromise the curiosity thing. Really, it actually probably emboldens it but you need to be hanging with your single friends out in public not at the house not eating bonbons not none of that no netflix none of that you need to be out and about even if you don't do clubs make an exception if you're gonna post anything on social media make sure other dudes are in the picture if it's you and your three homegirls so it's four y'all you need to be four dudes in the picture y'all need to take a group picture that's a that's not a life coach that's a toxic coach that's a that's a coach of toxicity, of our city, of our city. Like, what the fuck? It's funny because last time I referenced um, Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys, someone said, someone said, oh shit, you referenced Beastie Boys, and now, uh, System of a Down, uh, Preach, you grew up uh, an angry white kid. Yes. And to that, I'd like, it's just because, you know, uh, my life has been broke my life into pieces. This is my last resource. Suffocation, no breathing, don't give up. If I cut you, shut out! <laughs> it's a good solo. <laughs> like, like, I remember being in high school and nobody listened to white people music, like, like, yeah. Evanescence and shit like that. Yeah. Like, uh, save me, yeah. turn me off and save me. You know, but that song. That shit. <laughs> this, this is my last you, this is your last resort to go to social media to make someone feel just that is toxic M more importantly this life coach is telling you to not be yourself in order to get back at somebody who does not want to be with you and not all breakups is a bad thing yeah you, you might not be ready or Maybe. at a place where you can be in a relationship if you are a petty human being you may not be fit for a relationship. It's like a slow active poison. It just constantly erodes the person that you're with until they're wither and die. Like, don't, 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 don't allow Ooh, pettiness to live. Bars. The thing that happened, while you're doing, you're being out of your way to be someone that you're not, and you do spending all this energy with this person that dumped you, you're doing all of that. You're going to be focused on that person. And when Mr. Right is actually going to come around, you're not even going to see him because you're going to be focused on that other dude that you try to focus on and try to make jealous and all of that. Even worse. 
It's not that Mr. Right is she's not going to see Mr. Right. Mr. Right is never going to get to see her no. because she's going to be so busy being out of character and not being herself yep. that he's going to be looking at him like, "Ew, I would not want to get with that girl," even though that's not who you are. But you're too busy trying to pretend to get back at your ex that you're not looking ahead. You're so busy being in the rearview mirror and trying to get back at the person who honked their horn that you're not focused on the road ahead of you and making sure you get to your focus on you and do you, boo boo. So the first of several benefits to dating a woman with children, you know, she's the least likely to be running in and out these clubs every day of the week. That is so not true. No, but I've seen plenty of single mothers. I know plenty of single mothers. I've seen single mothers with their kids in the club. Yeah, because, you know, they're 32 and their kids 18. I've seen that. Because most guys there just want to come home and smash, and she can't have random dudes coming in at her house. That's not true. That's not true. That <laughs> Take it from someone who smashed a single mother or two. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I had to walk quietly by the kid's room. Like... <laughs> and then she's like, Mommy? And I was like, go to sleep, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've been seeing a whole lot of talk about these new sex dolls. The ones that dudes are telling women they need to watch out for because they're about to take y'all place. But I also saw that these dolls cost $2,000 a piece. So my question is, why should women have to worry about a doll that y'all can't afford? Who are you talking to? The other half of y'all still complain about $200 a month in child support, and you can't even take the girl that you do like on a real date to a restaurant that doesn't have a drive through Who are you talking to? Or you on a Netflix and chill with your homeboy's password. And then y'all be talking about splitting rent 50-50 with your woman, and that's if you can move out of your mama's house. Who are you talking to? Hell, sound a lot to me like women don't need to watch out. You dudes need to humble yourselves because women these days got that bag who are you talking to that is literally none of the people i know so it says if my man pays for lunch i'll pay for dinner if he pays for the movie tickets i got the snacks if he gets the bill i get the next 50 50 is where it's at stop expecting to be treated like a queen if you're not treating him like a king Okay, and my thoughts to this, whenever she's talking about how she treats her man, we first got to understand that all men are not the same. You know, actually, I think there are two types of guys in this world. There's a type of guy that hears a girl saying something like that, and he says, yeah, that's right. You are supposed to pay everything 50-50. We are going to split this down the middle. That's how it's supposed to be. Tick for tack. I pay some, you pay some. And then there's a type of guy that hears a girl say something like that, and he says, you know what? Yeah, you are supposed to contribute and add value to the relationship, but when it comes to this providing shit, I got that. Isn't it possible that the reason the woman wants to pay is that so she doesn't have to feel like she owes you anything at the mm. end of the day? He's not just dogging her though. He's dogging all the men who are fine with the idea that if a woman wants to engage in 50-50 and you listen to her, you're like, you know what, lady, you got a sound yeah. idea. I'm going to listen to you. Yeah. All the men who would let that happen, you're trash. Yeah. For listening to what a girl wants, you're trash. You know, there's the kind of guy that whenever you pulling up to the house 2.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, middle of the night with your man, and you look in the house and it look like somebody in there, something ain't right, and you tap him to let him know, there's a type of guy that'll say, shit, you saw it, you go check it out. <laughs> what? I went last time, you go. You know, all men ain't the same. All men ain't one person. It's two of them motherfuckers. <laughs> And I ain't saying there's only one that you could be in a relationship or a marriage with because I've seen both of these guys in relationships with women who say that they happy. And the reason for that is because there's also two types of women in this world. There's a type of girl like this that says, it's okay if you only want to pay half the bills, I pay the other half. It's okay if you don't want to pay for the day or even initiate or plan the day. I can do that sometimes. It's okay if you want to play NBA 2K and Fortnite all day on all your off days. At least you got a job that gives you 20 hours a week and pays you minimum wage and we sitting here financially stressed out. It's okay, at least you trying, life is hard. And then there's the kind of woman that says, you know what, if you get down, I'll hold it down. I'll help us progress to that point where we're trying to be. But damn all this gender reversal, gender- Is we done or are we finished? You mean what he said? He said, said, fuck all this gender reversal bullshit. So when he's talking about women empowerment, how women got the bag now, how women are making money, that's empowering, that's fine. That's good gender reversal, right? But whenever men have to pay 50-50, whenever we're moving to progressiveness like that, he's like, no! Now, I'm, I'm empathetic in that I understand that the dating world is confusing. I understand that it's not easy to navigate and that for a lot of women out there, they have a hard time understanding why they're being cheated on, why their relationships aren't working, and they don't know how to navigate men really well. And so here is this attractive man who uh, seems to be very uh, upfront. He's charismatic and he's saying things that appeal to you and it's helping you feel better. And so you think there's some truth to it. But when you really break it down, you realize that this stuff is actually dangerous. And my problem with his advice more than anything is that not enough of it 
is about how much power women have over themselves within relationships. You know, instead of telling you guys what it needs for you to really work on and how to self-actualize, a lot of it is just like, hey, men are trash, men are controlling, and all this other stuff. Men need to wait, which, you know, alleviates you of your responsibility, but it doesn't actually solve the problem. And you recognizing what your responsibility in this is and how much power you have gives you the strength you need to actually be better in your future relationships. I think that Derek really believes he's just doing good things. And I'm sure that for some women, he has actually helped them. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. What I will say, however, is that he leans so far to one side that there's a lack of balance in what he says. It feels like he, all he does is pander. Like when I watch a video, it doesn't mean I disagree all the time. But a lot of times, it just seems like he's pandering. No, but he said it. Like the, most of the time, I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah. And sometimes, and it's like, in order to uplift women, you don't necessarily have to put down men. And in order to uplift women, you don't necessarily have to alleviate them of their responsibility. Sometimes the answer to their problems is in women itself, meaning that it is take a, it's a matter of growth. It's a matter of learning a lesson from a past relationship. It's a matter of, you know actually spending time in the real world and really just living life and discovering who you are as a human being before you can be with somebody else. But the problem is there's no fast solution to that problem, right? It takes time, it takes effort, and it takes consistency before you can have that long-lasting relationship. And people want to have the advice that they need today to get to the relationship that they need tomorrow. But guess what? That relationship that you want tomorrow may be actually something you get to discover 10 years down the line. Yeah. People are getting married at 36, 38, 39. And it's not because every man before that is garbage. It's that maybe you aren't the person that you need to be. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you're, the you're person. not the person that you, you need to be to be in that relationship. Yes. Meaning like you've, you've, you've learned some things from your parents. You've learned some things through life. You have to unlearn certain... It's fucked up. You need to unlearn certain things that was given to you by your parents and by the things around you you need to unlearn and rewire your set because there's a lot of problematic behaviors that you have and that you've acquired that you thought that was the truth but it's not the truth and you have to rewire yourself into that truth into okay pastor Prince. hey listen my name is preach and that's for a reason <laughs> you need to rewire yourself into that direction Can that I you need to have the proper and the righteous path into that relationship that you're supposed to have with the god I and Man. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm not mad at you. Pandering advice, like China just puts all the blame on men in regards to why your dating life is not successful. Because I'm telling you, it is not just men. And if you think it is, I'm sh I'm telling you, you're gonna have a hard time down the line. Yeah. So just be patient with yourself. I don't know why he's always in his car. All right. I don't know why nobody's seen his legs. I don't know why. No, nobody really seen our legs. So true. That's a good point. Show me your legs. Get it up on there. Show me your legs. I ain't getting up on there. Show me your legs. Not a, show me your legs? Show him your legs. I've seen your legs. No. Show them your legs. No. I don't need pressure from you. I'm going to take my time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>